Take this picture for just a moment and understand something. The disciples at this time are no longer 12. Yet a multitude. They just came from Lazarus raising at the tomb. And the crowd sort of gathered around and started following. Jesus always caused a, a crowd wherever he went. But now they weren't departing from him. Now they weren't leaving him. Now he wasn't leaving them. They were all in a multitude together. And as they're making their way uh, up the Mount Olives, uh, going towards Jerusalem, uh, uh, the Bible says uh, in verse number uh, uh, 29 that he sent two uh, of his disciples. Uh, I want to talk to you for just a few moments this morning, if I could, uh, about loosing the coat. Uh, Luke got all over during Sunday school testimony. Uh, uh, but I want to, to view that for just a moment from the view of the cult. Uh, we always see it from the crowd hollering. We always see it from the Pharisees uh, denying. We even see it from the Lord who's coming to play us. Uh, but I want to look at it from the position of the cult. Uh, here he has, we see first and foremost, uh, of the service of the two sins. Uh, they went with instructions. Uh, he was saying unto them, Go ye over against you. Uh, what he's saying is there's a village right ahead of you uh, uh, that you need to go into. Uh, now let me just go ahead and clarify this for just a second. Uh, there's a lot of you uh, that won't get out of home. Amen. Uh, there's a lot of you uh, like the whole masses. Uh, we love the, the whole revival. Uh, we love coming together. Uh, we love uh, the presence of the Lord and the Spirit of God. Uh, but every once in a while, uh, God will pick somebody out uh, and say, I need you uh, to go over yonder uh, and do something for me. Uh, and you know what? More often than not, uh, we have trouble getting to understanding of what the Lord wants. Uh, but the Bible said that He gave them a direction. Go just in front of you. He gave them a destination. There's a village there, a specific place, and there's a duty. Find the colt. Hey, listen, loose him and bring him here. He even described the colt. He said, there's never a man sat on him. This animal that Jesus was looking for, this colt that Jesus was looking for, was unbroken. This colt that Jesus was looking for was untrained. This colt that Jesus was looking for had been unused. If never a man had sat on him, never a man had messed with him. He was looking for somebody or something that nobody had put hands on. And whether he saw it before or whether he knew it spiritually, he knew exactly where it was and exactly the condition it was in. Does that sound familiar to anybody? Amen. 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 That's right. Am I the only cult in the house? He knew exactly where it was. Yes. And he knew exactly how it would be found. Can I say to you this morning, uh, the scent, uh, the service of the scent, uh, everybody has a part to play. Some of you may be the cult is found. Some of you may be the owner of the cult. Some of you may be the ones that he sent. But we're all in service unto God Almighty. He sent them by two, which is very unusual but very telling. The Bible says in Matthew chapter number 18 and verse number 16, in the mouth, Jesus was saying this in the mouth of two or three witnesses, that every word may be established. Luke chapter number 9, verse number 1. He sent them out to preach. He gave them authority over demon spirits and over diseases. And they went out preaching the kingdom of heaven. And they went out healing their sick. But I want you to notice something about these two that were sent. If I could for just a minute by way of introduction. There was no excuse. Whoa! Oh, nobody said, I can't go. 
Nobody said, Lord, I remember, but I forgot. Nobody said, let me do this first. Nobody had questions. Nobody said, what if? Nobody said, all the way over yonder. Jesus said, go. And they went. I would that the Lord would give us some of that unction. Yes, if God says go, That's right. we go. Yeah. Amen. Yes. We get too comfortable in our own salvation sometimes. Yes. We think God saved us just to be flyers on the wall. Yes. He did. He saved yes. us to be servants and to be in his service. Yes. And if we're in his service, uh, when he says we got to go, uh, we ought to get them up uh, and yes. head that way. Yes. We have a direction. Uh, we have a destination. Uh, and we have a duty. Uh, God's wanting something from us. Uh, why are we willing uh, uh, just to go ahead and go uh, as he's asking? Amen. Amen. Please understand. Your Bible says in Matthew 16, 24, if any man, somebody say me, yeah. come after me, right. let him deny himself. Yeah. Right. That's a threefold thing. You gotta deny who you are. You gotta take up your cross. And you gotta follow him. Yeah. Now, didn't he say it's always going to be sweet paradise? No, he didn't. Some of it's travail. Some of it's in tribulation. But what he said, if any man come after me, that means if we don't claim the name of Jesus, yes. we're going to have to get ourselves out of the way. Oh, my God. We're going to have to pick up the cross. And we're going to have to follow him. Amen. Two. And the Bible said that they went. They did not know his plan. They did not know his purpose. They said, okay, Lord, let's go. My. Some would say, my loyalty is pure. But I'm going to promise you something. Following Jesus, loyalty, a loyalty is going to be rewarded. Yeah, yeah. Here they go out to this village. I'm just going to paraphrase for a minute. Is it okay if I leave my notes for a second? Come on, go ahead. And they say, we're over here in a place where two ways meet. They're in Denmark. They're at a point of decision. Right. We're either going to go home with him yeah. or we can go another way. Right. Uh, but he sent us here for a purpose. Uh, right. Hey, hey, listen. Uh, and a whole bunch of people uh, uh, that God would send somewhere and they changed their own direction and said, yeah. Lord, I don't know if you went that for me. Yeah. And they'll turn around. Uh, but I want you to know something. There's a significance in this coat. Uh, there's something about uh, this coat. Uh, this coat uh, uh, had to be under four years old uh, to be claimed a coat. Uh, and for him to say, never a man has said all this uh, means the fact that uh, that it hadn't been fooled with very much. Uh, if you ever fooled with horses uh, or yeah. mules or ponies, uh, ponies are disgusting. Yeah. Uh, they'll bite, kick, and this and that that he'll tell you. But if you ever fool with them, you gotta understand some. You gotta do some groundwork before you gotta climb on that animal's back. It's got to get used to you. It's got to get used to the halter. It's got to get used to the bridle. It's got to get used to the saddle and the blanket. And then it's got to get used to carrying all that while under the burden. And he said, I won't want any nobody to us. He's over there. The Bible tells us they went to get him. And the owner says, what are you doing loosely in the coat? The Lord has to be with him. Yes. I'm going to say something real quick. And then I'll get on it. I wonder if we can ever get a clear picture. The Bible gives us symbols of what uh, this cult is. 
This coat represents service. Right. This coat represents humility. This coat represents suffering. This coat represents peace. And if you go back to Numbers chapter 22, uh, the coat represents wisdom. Right. Ask Baal. I'll right. save him from dying at the hand of God. Right. It was the mule uh, that turned on him and told him, have I not kept you all these years? Here in this coat is the coat in that day, or the donkey in that day, uh, it signified uh, the identity uh, of the right. Uh, I got to get somewhere. Uh, we thank you. A big old man on the big coat. That's what your physical says. But you don't understand something. If yeah, that thing was breaking age, it had to be at least two years old. Yeah. It had to be of a size that he carry. Right. But when Jesus was going to ride it, it was going to be a signification of the king returning in peace. Yes. Lowly. Yes. Like right now, I'm getting tired of it. Lowly with salvation. Your king comes. Hey, this donkey out of his coat was a sign of the rider that it was all that was on it. Can I say this to you? Uh, there wasn't a lot of pasture land in the village. You think about that. He said, go to the village. Wasn't a lot of pasture land in the village. We got one or two things. We either gonna stall it or we're gonna tie it. It can't just be let run loose through the town. Uh -oh. So here we are. That's good. Untrained, untamed, hey man, unbroken, That's good, and unused. How do we keep it? Are we going to put it in a stall? Are we going to tie it? Understand? That's what the world was doing to you. Amen. Thank you, Ray. Luke got all over me this morning in his testimony. I sat back out. I thought, Lord, just hand him the notes. There you go. <laughs> but understand something. If you'll get ready to be broken, yes, sir. you're not going to be stopped. That's right. right. You're going to be tired. Yeah. You see, what they want you to do is wear yourself out, uh, pawing around, uh, uh, walking around, uh, yeah. worrying around, thinking of all the noise going around, and the stomping, uh, and the pulling, uh, and the resisting that you're doing. They wanted you to wear yourself out but the Lord sent somebody yes, sir. right away yes, uh, that had the authority uh, to reach yes. them uh, and pull uh, the things that were tying you down loose uh, and get you to the Lord. He said, I have need of him. Loose them uh, and bring him here. Glory! Can I say this to you? Five different verses in this chapter. The word tied is used. Five different verses that were referring to the condition in which this coat was carried. Do you understand what your condition was when God came to you? Hey, listen. It leads us if we look at it. This animal, he's less than four years old, has to be less than four years old, or it's not considered a cult. He's less than four years old. And Jesus is coming to the end of his ministry. That means only one thing. God birthed this cult for Jesus. Right. Put yourself in that place. God brought you into this world to give himself glory. Amen. Use for the master's meat. Amen. Can I say this to you very quickly? I don't think you're getting it right yet. And here he is for a time and for a purpose. He was meant to be used by God. But it wasn't meant to be tied. He was meant to be loose. Some of us can't help how we are. But the fact of the matter is, if we get loose, God can use us. Amen. 
Fuck ties. Fuck ties. Fuck the bound. Some of us are bound to guilt. Yeah. Let's just get where we live. Some of us are bound to guilt. I can't forget the life I lived. I can't forget the things I've done. I can't forget the past I have, and God cannot forgive me. Listen, let me help you with something. If you're meant for God's use, you need to untie that guilt. Because the Bible says, Behold, all things be yes. yes. Amen. Yes. If you have faith in God, all things shall pass away. All things are become new. Some yes. of us have problems with anxiety. Amen. Anxiety is real. Amen. Don't you get don't you give me no oh it's all in your head. Anxiety is real. Amen. It is truly real. Yes. Hey. But we get anxious over. What if I fail? What if I? I really don't want loose. I'm afraid. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. It's not up to you to live. It's up to God to yes. live in you. When you receive the Holy Ghost, when you receive Christ as your Savior, you're no longer your own. You don't worry about your faults and failures. You just worry about Him. Some of us are tied by concerns. Yes. What will others think? <laughs> what will the people at school think? What will the people on the job go say? If I claim Jesus, well, they, they won't talk to me. Can I tell you why we have such problems with being bound? We're trying to juggle two things at the same time. Yeah. We want to hold up Jesus. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, that's what this cult's ultimate goal is going to be. Lift up the Lord. And what we want to maintain of the earth, of the nations, of the world's idea of what we were. Amen. You're going to come out from among that. You're going to have to be a separate people. You're going to have to touch not the unclean thing. And then God will be a God unto you. Amen. Yes, amen. Some of us are tied by deceptions. Oh, oh. Are we not? Come on, man. Twice last week I heard cell phones going on in the congregation. Mm -hmm. Are you scared you're going to miss something? Mm -hmm. I'm going to say that yours could have been visitors. Twice last week. Mm -hmm. I heard two different cell phones mm -hmm. going on. Could you not lay that thing down mm -hmm. long enough to give God glory? Mm -hmm. Now I understand if you're an emergency worker, or police officer, or somebody's phone call from the hospital. Mm -hmm. But bless the Lord, the furniture factory ain't calling you. That's right. You're not on your shift. That's right. And if you're that important, you need more money. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> We've got so attached to smartphones right. and the tablets. That's right. We disconnect yes. from the rest of the world. Yeah. 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 Me and Sister Kim have a pact with one another. We find out who gets to leave their cell phone at home. <laughs> there ain't no joke. She come through the house and says, like, I'm leaving my cell phone here. I said, I done got mine plugged up somewhere else. Do I have to take my hand? I said, well, I was up to it. I ain't going to. <laughs> Do y'all remember the time before you had cell phones? Yeah. Yeah. Anybody here my age? Yeah. I remember a time when you didn't even have a phone in the house. Yeah. And when they came out, it was the first thing they came out with was the party line. Yeah. Everybody around your room and down the curve and back over yonder. And you picked that phone up, you had to wait for the church ladies to quit talking. So you could call somebody. And if it was bad, you'd have to say, excuse me, excuse me, I've got to use the phone. You didn't want everybody to have their own private line. So you could stay on the phone longer. 
Then they can give the extension card. My dad never would buy one of them. If you're going to talk, you stand right there in the kitchen, right by the wall. You wouldn't even get a desk phone. You're going to stand right there by the wall. And you're going to state your business and you're going to get on for the rest of your life. Now, if I was to pass you off the plate and tell you to take up your cell phones for service, some of y'all are liable to preach Hang on. That's right. Hang on. Hang on. Go ahead. It's an obsession. Yeah. Can I tell you, things can tie you down. Things have a way of taking over your life. Some of chemical dependencies are tied by them. Yeah. You don't hear me holler a whole lot about it. Yeah. I recovered from it. I used to be bound by drugs and alcohol. Yeah. I got loose. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Come on. I went in the full submission. 
I got close to Jesus. It wasn't my fault. It was his. He came to me. But when I got close to him, all of a sudden, my head dropped down. I wasn't proud no more. I wasn't stepping high no more. I come up under him. I said, Lord, let me lift you. Bible said, like so many of the scriptures do, when they get close to him, they become useful in the service. They follow the submission. They put their garments on him. They set Jesus on him. Now all of a sudden, it becomes the fulfillment of the scripture. Zechariah 9 and 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughters of Zion. O daughters of Jerusalem, behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation. He is lowly, riding upon an ass, upon the colt, the flow of an ass. And they knew that. And it started hitting them when they got Jesus upon him. The king is coming. I may have told you this uh, last year, and if I did, you forgot it by now. Jesus said, If I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all of men unto me. What you're seeing this, uh, this Palm Sunday is a preface of Calvary. This is just a short look into what's going to happen. His feet left the earth. Hey! I'm going to tell you something about, about the coat now. His feet left the earth. They started hollering. And the whole multitude is with him. They started giving God glory. All of a sudden when they seen him leave the earth. His feet left the earth. He wasn't on this mud ball no more. They started singing praises. And crying for mercy. That's what Hosanna means. Lord save us. And they went to hollering, uh, recognizing him as king. Uh, but let me tell you something better than that. What's better than them praising God? There's a coat stuck up under him. He's lifting up the king. And the best thing about that, they started throwing them branches down. Uh, you know that has to be. They started throwing them branches down so that coat's feet never touched the earth. That's right. Come on. Ah! Come on, Sam. Yeah. Ah! Yes. Ah! Yeah. God can keep you from the mud ball that this place is. Yeah. He can keep you yeah. from the pit and you're lifting him up. Yeah. He's right. going to give you a, a something, amen, to walk on. Hey, you know what? I want to all y'all come in and y'all just dodge and duck. You understand what this was? These were, the, these were the palm branches to keep that animal off the earth yeah. and give it a direct path That's right. where it's going. What does that mean to you and I? Wherefore see, <laughs> we're compassed about so I so great a cloud of witnesses. Right. Hey! Come on. There's Abraham's palm branch. Uh -oh, Let me follow him. That's right. yes. There's Isaac's oh, palm branch. Right. Let me follow him. Yes. There's Jacob's palm branch. Let me follow him. Lord, there's David and Samuel's palm branch. Let me follow him. Hey, hey, hey. Let me show you something. Hey, it's not because I'm anybody. That's right. But here's Jeff's palm branch. Yeah, right. Why don't you find a spot That's somewhere right. and walk like this yes. and just know that God has kept you yes. from the dregs of this world. Just know that God, while you're in service to Him, will get you to where you need to go without you having to falter. Hey. He's under the king now. Right. Yeah. And he's stepping in. <laughs> on the testimonies of all those who have come before him. My daddy's got a palm branch out there. My grandma got a palm branch out there. Them saints of old used to shout the house down. Their palm branches out there. 
I have so you can hold up the game. Jesus said, check this out, and I'll turn you loose. Jesus said, come unto me all ye that labor and all heavy labor. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly. And you will find rest for your soul. And he says something very, very to the point to you. He says, for my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. I've never had a problem raising up under the Savior and lifting him up. Never had a problem. My problems always come when I try to one hand him right? and one hand the world. Can't do it. I get out of balance. Right? But that was Lord. Somewhere this morning. <clears throat> May not be you directly in the path of sin. May not be. But God's trying to lose you from something. So he can use you for something else. I wonder this morning, walking the path, like Bible said they come into town, and as soon as they seen Jesus on that coat, and as soon as that donkey on that coat started stepping on the branches, instead of stepping in the dirt, they started crying and singing. And the Pharisees came out and said, Master, rebuke them. Tell them to hold their peace. They don't know what they're saying. And he said, I'll tell you, if these hold their peace, the rocks will cry out. If you don't believe that, y'all get over in Psalms 96. Get over in Psalms 143, 147, 147. When the earth rises up at the touch of the Master. Waves come at the touch of the master. Uh, Jesus was on the earth. He didn't have a problem calming the sea. Because here was the thing. The sea was rising up to him. He's the one that put it there. He's the one that said, you got to be still for a minute. They don't want to see you turn loose on me. You go ahead and calm down. It's their turn. Right? Can I ask you this question? You're here this morning for a reason. And God is trying to loose you because he's got need of you. Right? Mm -hmm. He don't put you out of path where you don't have to touch this world. Uh, you don't have to be a part of this world. You just have to be in it. <laughs> you don't have to be a part of it. The question is, will you let him use you? He sent y'all all last week the word of God to get loose. Yes, sir. Some of you did. Yes, Some of you did. <coughs> there's, there's things that we have in our lives that bind us. Amen. We can go all day. Jealousy, haughty spirit. We all have things that bind us. And Jesus is saying, before I can use you, I have to lose you. Before he could use the coat. If the coat never made it to him, he would have never went in trial. It had never been Hosannas. It never would have been any prophecy. Do you understand what that means? If God could use you, if God spoke to you and said, I'm going to use you, are you with me? To fulfill my prophecy. Would that make a difference to you? If God said, came to you in your night and said, I'm using you to fulfill prophecy. Would you, would, would you want to get loose? 
You understand, they didn't even know what God's purpose was. And they went anyway. Because God had need of this covenant. And when we were standing, if you can give me a thousand, we got to close.